It's been a couple weeks since I've been in the shop, so let's get back to work on the Fokker D7. Busy like a bee. Yeah, I've had a whole lot of stuff to do that just kind of got this little project here pushed to the side for a couple weeks. And I'm still not done. Um, because as you can see, eh, it's hard. It's somewhat empty right now. Yeah, we're getting some more furniture later on today. So it's going to be even more full. So I got to keep trying to get little bits and pieces done with the Fokker. Um, just to get it prepped and ready to paint. So, where I'm at right now, and because, like I said, it's been a while, um, what I was doing was any little bit of free time I had, I came in the shop just to make sure that we've got all the hardware, uh, the landing gear, the cabane struts, the wing struts, um, that has all been covered with fabric. And... It took me probably longer to cover all of this than it took me to cover the fuselage. This stuff was very, um, let's just say, kind of stressful in a way because of how you had to work with it. Um, but yeah, it's it, in the first piece you, you're not going to see, you can see where little mistakes were made because you're trying to figure out how to work around all these little acute angles. How is it going to work? So... Um, I came down, uh, it probably, probably on, the, on the last couple ones, it, it was dialed in uh, much easier to do than the first one to do. So, the cabane struts were the hardest just because of what you were working with, but they're all covered. So, and of course, the easiest one were just the, the rear wing struts. But, uh, that's done. So, the only thing I have to do to that thing is just do a couple light sand uh, jobs on them just to get everything kind of smoothed out very nicely and more coats and nitrate dope. Now, the other issue with the nitrate dope, um, I did have to get some more because what I got from a buddy of mine, Larry, it, it is, it's old dope. It started to, to brown, tarnish. Um, it's still good and, and it's working, but that's what's on this. That's what's on the solid wood. I figured I didn't wanna get it's even though it's dirty it's still going to work because this stuff's going to be primered before i spray it because i found out you know several years ago just shoot a coat of primer on top of everything when it's done so that way when you coat it uh with the paint you're not going to have problems with trying to lift the paint underneath um pretty much if you guys watch the videos i did on the on the big orange monster on the taylor craft the issues i had with the new paint uh, let's just say the chemical compounds in them, they were doing really weird things to itself where it would come in and even after a week's period of time, you sprayed on the next coat and it would come down and loosen the coat underneath and start lifting it. So that was when I found out that with the newer paints, as much as I didn't want to, I always used the aluminum paste mixed in with the dope just to go ahead and, and stop UV rays from getting through and getting to the fabric. Um, and I don't know if that was part of the problem, um, but as soon as I decided to start shooting uh, a thin coat of primer on top between layers of paint, uh, all the problems went away. So that's what I did on all of the subsequent uh, planes that I've built since then, and I'll probably be doing the same exact thing to this one. That way, uh, my chances of having color start to lift on this plane will be zero i hope so what i did do is i got another brand new gallon of the the randolph the, the non-tautening dope so instead of normally just hitching a ride and going up to wag arrow it's about from where i live now i'm a little bit closer it's probably about an hour drive and i decided that instead of driving all the way up there and all the way back let me just go ahead and get it uh, i've never bought from wicks before this is down closer to the St. Louis area. It's in Illinois. Um, I went ahead and put the order in for the dope because the price is competitive everywhere. It's about the same exact price. 
So figure for that and the shipping, um, it was like $21 shipping, you know, just, just to upstate Illinois. Um, I decided that that was good enough for me. So that way, because I don't have to spend a couple, you know, two, two and a half hours of just travel back and forth. And you know, with the cost of gas, it's it's still, the gas was cheaper than 21 bucks, but me not having to go do it was worth the 21 bucks. So that is actually over there, still in the gallon unsealed. Um, and that, I'll break that up and then mix a whole new batch uh, when I have to go ahead and start doing all the open weave on the fabric and also on the, excuse me, on the fabric, on the wings, and also on the fuselage. So, the only thing I have left to cover is the thing that I've, or I've been thinking about it over and over and over, and not quite losing sleep, but almost, is this little gem. Um, had a couple comments. One guy commented and just said, just go ahead and uh, use uh, fiberglass. Just go ahead and glass it. I I've done glass work before. What this thing is, I I'm not looking for strength. Uh, and glassing is going to take about the same amount of time as it takes me to put the fabric on. But this thing is such a rigid structure. You know, the only way it's going to break is if it hits the ground at a very high rate of speed, which I have no intention of doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we'll just start putting uh, pretty much just fabric on it and, and covering it. So my whole thing is I was trying to look at pictures on how these things are put together in real life and where the panels come off. Now because the panels themselves that are actually up there on the top shelf, um, because of the way the panels are set up, the panels are glued into place, they don't come off. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go ahead, I'm gonna start from the back and work forward. So I think I'm gonna come in and we're gonna go right about back in here somewhere maybe almost even with this. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have this piece here terminate here, up over the top, uh, just because that way when I come in and lay something down on the backside, when, I'll change my mind, probably. But this is, this is my plan before I start doing it, how I wanna do it. Um, I think I'm gonna have it so I can have an overlap here, or I'll bring this a little farther forward and overlap it back here just so it looks like it's actually layers, so to speak, where it could be there's almost like a joint, a joint, uh, an overlay. So if, if it's, like I said, in real life, I don't know how they did it. You can look at pictures, but you're not seeing exactly what you wanna see. Um, so, and I think just because of the way these things are gonna be sprayed up and flown, nobody's really gonna notice the difference. So let me go ahead, get some pieces cut, and let's get back to work. Remember how I said I was gonna start back here and work up to the front? I started at the front. I decided that I was gonna call this the little chin piece. The, let's call it the moustache. All right, so this, I decided to cover this first because it's the, it's the smart thing to do. So this was covered over, wrapped underneath, and what I did is, you probably can't see it, but I came in, I left little tabs that came out just a little bit proud, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch, uh, just onto the sides. Just so when I go ahead and cover the sides, it's just gonna cover over the top of that, so it's gonna just seal that seam up. Now, what I'm gonna try to do, even though I said I was gonna start, come from the back up to here and then a separate piece, I was just doing a little, playing around over here. Let me set the camera up a little better so you guys can take a look. Let's we'll see how well this will zoom in just so you can probably see what I'm gonna say. Let's see how that works. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna start at the back. This piece might flex enough. This will probably be the piece, but right now it's uh, it needs a little bit of a trim work on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the back. And when I come up to the front, you can see, I can hold it down here, I'll hold it firm up on the top here. I can hold it here, and I can go ahead and start pulling this thing as I glue it, and then because it's fabric, I can pull it around. 
So I'm going to start on the back. We'll come all the way up to the front to right about here. It'll be glued down. So this whole section back here will be all glued down and I'll probably not touch the side first um, because I want to work with everything up here on the top and then I can go ahead and make adjustments with the side when it comes time to stick the side down. So I'll come up start on this part right here alone i'll get this taken care of i'll anchor the back if you can see the back i'll anchor the back right there and then i'll work on this area right up here once i get this done then the side's going to be easy this side over here piece of cake so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in before i do this i've already got this trimmed out to this point here i'll cut this down i'll make a flat piece around here that overlaps up over the top this here i will pull down over the front so even though there'll be two separate pieces here um, it, it'll blend it'll be a little blend line right about there so um, i think that's going to be the quickest easiest way to do it uh, with the least uh, potential for something bad happening so where we sit right now with the cowling with the cowling right there um, as you already know, I did the bottom part here, the chin or the, the mustache. Uh, I also came in and covered this. And uh, so it comes in here, it wraps down over the front, it wraps down over the back, and then it comes up on this side of, let's just call this the nose. Uh, it comes up this side, but it does not wrap over. So what I did was I went ahead and took a fixture I'd made and modified it so that, that way this can sit up on the top and I can do all the work on it and because I'm going to be pulling on the fabric down around the front. I just wanted to make sure I wanted to set up so that I can go ahead and it's going to give me something good stable to work on. So this this isn't going anywhere. So what I will do is I will go ahead. Sorry about that it was an earthquake. That was my kneecap it hitting the tripod. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to reset the camera so you can see how I'm going to put this side on. And then the other side, of course, I'll do off camera. But at least you see how this side's done. Um, there's very little left to cover. It's just this side, it's going to take a while. And then this side over here is going to take a very short amount of time to do. So the piece of fabric that's going to come here is not that one. I believe it will be this one. Uh, because this one is a little bit wider than this piece here, which is going to go on the opposite side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this set up so we know that everything's going to fit nicely and run down the side. This might not be the fabric I'm using on this. No, well, that's got to be the fabric I'm using. There we go. Let's turn it around the other direction. All right, so I'm going to go ahead... And this will, this will cover the whole side over here, so we're good to go. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start with a dot back here. So let's just uh, cross your fingers. Everything should work nicely. Let's get it so we've got a little bit of slopped overage. And we'll do this in the back. We'll let that start to set up a little bit and then we'll start pulling it and then work everything forward. The figure will be working up to about this point and then from there I'm going to come up around this top piece here. So I'll probably bring it down this edge, sweep it up. Then we're going to start working everything forward and then we're going to start pulling this. And this is where we can work with it. I don't know how well you can see that in the camera. But uh, we'll be able to work with this to get it pulled exactly how we want it.
Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out of the stand, flip it on its side, and let me just finish pulling it down. I'll bring it right back. This side is done, the top, this part of the top, and this side is done. This part has not been done yet. It's eight o'clock, 8.01 p.m., and I gotta go do some shopping, so I got food for tomorrow, because tomorrow's Monday, the, I think it's the 23rd. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna preempt this one, and we're just gonna go ahead, because you'll see it in the next video, probably. Uh, as I start reassembling the plane to get everything ready uh, before we prep for paint. So let's just go ahead, even though it's not really fully done, let's just go ahead and say the fuselage and the wings are covered. Everything's done, um, with the exception of me spending probably about 45 minutes doing this side. Um, everything is done and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it because it's just a camera and it's got no paint on it yet but uh, everything came out very nice all the all the overlaps uh, the tight little inside corners that you can't really see probably too well uh, where I had to go ahead and make little snippets all the way across just to get everything lined up but everything is on and it's feeling nice and smooth so I am a happy little camper so let's go ahead, call us a video, and I'll see you guys next time on Back in the Shop. Mm -hmm.